Welcome to the super fast touch designer tutorial series. In this tutorial, we'll learn a technique to create any type of displacement effect that looks organic and natural. Before we begin, I'd like to ask for a big favor. As you know, this channel has grown from 100 subscribers and we're now approaching 10,000. This growth benefits everyone. More subscribers mean more opportunities for me to create better tutorials and content and for you, it means access to even more in-depth knowledge about Touch Designer. To keep this momentum going, remember that subscribing to the channel helps us all continue improving and bringing even more valuable content. Chapter 1. Overview. All right, these tutorials are going to be quite concise because many of them are based on tutorials I've already done on YouTube. But I want you to notice that by using similar techniques, we can achieve remarkably interesting results. We have practically two networks in Touch Designer one for creating the X and Y coordinates, and another for the Z coordinate, which generates the most significant displacement movement. These two networks you may already be familiar with, but if not, and this is your first time seeing them, I'll leave a link in the description on Patreon to the tutorial that is publicly available on YouTube, where I explain in great detail what these two components do. Chapter 2. Network. Let's begin by creating a constant here. After this, we are going to create a grid which we will position a bit farther away in the Touch Designer network. Right-click on the grid operator and look for the SOP to operator and place it here. Add a select operator followed by a pattern operator. This is a super important operator for what we want to achieve. Perfect, we place it here. This setup is sufficient for the X and Y coordinates. For the Z coordinate, Let's create the following operators. We'll start with a LFO because we want to map certain values. After the LFO, we'll connect a math operator. Now, let's move on with a sequence of texture operators. We'll begin with a noise operator, as is common in most compositions. Let's add a blur operator, which is located here. After this, let's create a null and connect this composite as follows. Perfect. If you want, we can move this up a bit here. Let's create a second noise operator. We'll connect the composite as follows. And from this composite, let's create a level operator. I believe you are starting to realize that many of these networks have already been used before. Let's create a feedback operator, which is very well known. After the feedback, let's add a level operator and place it as follows. Finally, let's create an add operator or it could be a composite, depending on what feels more comfortable for you, and connect it this way. Then immediately drag it over the feedback to have this part resolved. Perfect. Now let's do something similar to what we did earlier. Right click and search for a top to operator. We will connect it here and following the top operator, we will connect a chop operator called shuffle. Finally, we will finish with another pattern operator. Now. I will rearrange these operators slightly to make everything easier to understand. Perfect. We will group these two patterns together, so let's create a merge operator here. We'll create a merge, but we will connect it down here. And from this merge, we will extract a null, which we will rename to instances. Now have the first two networks. Let's move on to the third one, which is a classic network based on SOPs. First, let's create a sphere, which will basically be the element we are going to clone. We place it here. We add a transform operator, connect it to a geo operator, which you can find here. And for this geo operator, we need a material. So we'll use a PBR material, which I almost always use. We'll drag the PBR material into the geo operator and select it as the material. We'll use a ramp operator here, which we will use to generate the color. Now let's create an environment light, which we will place here. For the environment light, we'll create a constant and drag it into the environment light, selecting it as the environment map. Next, we'll create a camera and a light. Finally, as always, to see everything we're doing, we will create a render operator and you will see how everything automatically connects to the render operator in Touch Designer. Now, to complete our post process, after the render operator, 
we will connect a screen space ambient occlusion operator to generate ambient occlusion. Next, we'll add a level operator to adjust some colors. And finally, an RGB key operator to set the background to black. We'll end with an output operator, which is basically where we will start to see everything in Touch Designer. This is an extremely simple network, but it will give us some very interesting results. Chapter two, parameters. Very well, let's move on to the parameters. Finally, after setting up the parameters, we'll do the mappings. So go ahead and select the first constant operator, open the parameters, create two channels and rename them. We will use the following values. Let's move on to the grid and select the following parameters. Now, let's go to the SOP2 operator. This can be left as it is. Let's move to the select operator. And here we'll simply specify what we want to use, which is the TX and TY channels. Perfect. Let's move on to the pattern operator. And in the pattern operator, we will use a random setting. Here we'll set the amplitude to 0.1 because we want this amplitude to be much more subtle in the range from 0 to 1 to 0 to 0 0.05. This would be practically everything we are going to do within the pattern operator here. Finally, in the channel section, select TX and TY channels. These are the two channels with which we will work on this composition in Touch Designer. Now, let's go to the network below. And the first thing we'll do is leave the noise operator as it is for now. But in the common tab, let's select parent panel size. Notice how now, all these top operators have the same resolution, which is important. Additionally, we'll select 32-bit float RGB setting. Perfect. Now we can start copying the following parameters. Keep in mind that these parameters are very subjective and you can use whatever parameters you prefer. So for now, I'll set the following parameters. Okay, and I'll mark this in red to remind myself that it's something I'll be optimizing constantly. Let's go to the blur operator and set these parameters. The rest can stay as they are. Now let's move on to the LFO operator we have above and use these parameters. Move on to the math operator, set the parameters to minus one to one and from 0.15 to 0.25. We'll see later why we're using these values. Now, let's position ourselves at the noise operator we have below and use the following values. Perfect. Let's move on to the composite operator. This is another important one that we'll mark in red because depending on the type of composition we use, this will change radically. In the operation setting, we will use negate, which is one of my favorites. Let's now copy the following parameters for the level. Perfect. Now, let's move on to the level operator from here and let's go to the opacity setting in the post and set it to 0.5. Perfect. We're starting to see some results. We're still a bit far from what we want, but for now, it's a good start. Let's go to the top to operator. And here's something important. We're going to remove practically all the channels, the alpha channel and the red and green channel. We'll only keep the blur operator. We'll rename as map TZ and also select in the crop option, full image. And now we have what we want. I'll hide this visualization now because I don't want it to consume too many resources. Let's go to the shuffle operator, which you already know well, and select sequence channels by name. Go to the pattern operator, select sine wave pattern, and set these values to two. Finally, in the amplitude setting, we'll go with 0.1. We'll set the range from zero to one, and from zero to five. Now we have something really interesting to work with in touch designer. Up to this point, the parameters for this network are perfect. Now, these parameters here are much quicker to set up and then we'll move on to the mappings. Select the sphere operator, and obviously, we'll make it a very small sphere.
select the transform operator. And here in transform, we'll decide on the size we want later. But for now, let's leave it at 50 so we can see it a bit better here. Let's go to the ramp operator now. These parameters are super important because I want to have a metallic texture. And for that, it's important to generate certain colors that will give a shine. So I'll create a key here, another one here, and another one here. I'll narrow these down as much as I can. And for the middle keyframe, I'll select a color that gives a bit of a shine. While the left color will remain black and the right color will also remain black. Now I'll select a color here and leave it completely white. And here, I'll repeat what I did earlier, but I want to add a slight white of color. I think it's almost white, so I'll create another keyframe. This one here will remain black. This one here will also remain black. And I'll narrow it down like this. This is pretty good. In the phase setting, we'll select 1 and 0.1. So now, I have this texture that is super interesting for creating more metallic effects. Perfect. Let's move on to post-process. And here, we'll use the following values in the ambient occlusion operator. Let's go to the level operator. Now, for the render operator, let's go to common and select the resolution I usually work with. And the resolution for all these operators should have adapted by now. But if in doubt, we can select panel size. And with that, we've completed the parameterization of all this. Now, there's an important parameter that we'll select here. The two patterns. We'll go to channel and select combine channels add. Chapter 3. Instances. Now, before we proceed with what we want to do with the instances, let's remember that the instances, whether they come from a top operator or a chop operator, must have the same number of samples. So the first mapping is very simple but yet important. We'll select the grid operator and we'll map it to the number of rows and the number of columns. We'll do the same with the noise operator from earlier. We'll map this resolution like this. With this, we know that we have the same number of samples. What's important is that this composite operator is using the second input as the leader, which gives us these dimensions. Finally, this error here is because we haven't named the channel we selected earlier. So I'll place it here. And with that, we've solved this problem. Now let's map the instances. We'll select the geo operator, enable the instances, and drag the instances here. I had already done this. Now, as you can see, my computer is completely overloaded, so we'll go to sphere, select polygon, and select set frequency in two which is more than enough. Now, what we want and where we'll start is with some types of animations, right? So the first animation we'll add here is the movement of the noise operator. Select this noise operator and go to the transform tab. Here, we'll use what you already know well, coming from ABS time.seconds and here below, the same divided by 15. Now we have some movement here, right? For the second noise operator, we'll do exactly the same. Go to the transform tab, open this window and copy abs time.seconds divided by five, and now we have this movement as well. We're getting pretty close to what we want to achieve. If you want to get a sense of what's happening, you can go to the camera and start playing around with it a bit to see what's happening with this displacement right now. Let's finish adding some more animations. I want the noise operator to modify the period, which is important because I want some movement here. So I'll reference the MAT operator here. It's subtle, but quite interesting to see. Finally, let's create a bit more animation in this section here. In this section, we'll go to the pattern operator, look for the phase, and again, copy abs time dot seconds divided by five possibly. Now we can see that the movement of the sine wave is constantly going up. This makes it more interesting to me. So far, we're doing well. 
Let's review this operator because we need to control the amount of displacement I have. For example, the brightness value here should actually be much lower, around 0.25. And if we want a bit more displacement, we can start tweaking the level parameters. Additionally, to start achieving that shiny, more metallic texture, we need to go to the Fong Material Settings. Here we can use these parameters. Set the emission to white. The background color will be left in gray. Here comes the interesting part. If we map this ramp operator, we'll call it color and map it to the color and also using as an emit map. Perfect. Now we have, as you can see, this shine we created earlier, which is starting to be noticeable here. We can already see that the reflections are giving us a different expression in this composition. So let's proceed. Now we'll go to the light operator and finding the right position for the light can be a bit tricky. So I prefer that you use these parameters. My computer is struggling a bit because I'm recording while also having this design open. But with the light operator, copy these values. Now, we have a slightly more subtle light here. Let's go to the light options and see the dimmer at 10. The most important thing we want here is obviously to have some shadows. Very well, we're getting close to the end. I'll save this now. So, now I want to manipulate this last level operator to get the colors I want. If I wanted to work in black and white, I'd select 32-bit mono, which is much more interesting for. I also think it would be interesting to start playing around with the values I have here. For example, with this setup, we already have something quite close to what I showed you at the beginning. I also think it's valid to start moving the camera, playing around in different places, and looking for different angles that give us different forms and angles. Remember where the light is positioned. You can also change it and see how you can change the feeling of the shadows. It's also super interesting to manipulate the metallic and roughness settings because they will give us completely different textures or much more interesting ones. So you can play around with that as well. Now, another thing I would do, which seems interesting to me, is with the composite operator. If we play around with different types of blends, we can get different results. For example, here we might change the blend mode. Also, we can get super contrasting things when we change the noise parameters. For example, the amplitude of this noise. we can control a lot. The displacement effect, I can increase the brightness here and start getting different things again. After that, we can start manipulating this other noise operator I have here, which is also super interesting to see in action. In the level operator, you need to start playing around with these values until you can see something here. I think it's worth trying make some changes with these two patterns. One is a random pattern, and the other is a sine wave. But if I set both to sine wave, it creates a cleaner texture. I also have the ability to adjust the amplitude, which creates a certain texture. Here in the sine wave pattern, I can also adjust the amplitude a lot, and I think I prefer doing this with these values here. For example, I have something more distorted. I can increase the number of cycles, decrease the number of cycles, and again, I can go back to the camera and check which view looks the most interesting to me. I don't like it when, for example, the spheres start to become too noticeable because they're too far apart. So I go to a level operator and increase the black level a bit so they start to disappear a bit or even invert it, which is interesting. It completely changes the feeling. You can also use the steps option, which is absolutely fantastic. I think this is one of the things that fascinates me the most to see in action. So this has been the tutorial where we've created a displacement effect with just a few steps, resulting in a highly effective outcome. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and see you in the next one.